Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part 11 to the um, pole position arcade game restore. Um, I put some simple green in this bucket. I'm going to put some water in it too. I want to soak this harness for a while in some simple green and water. But first, I want to take this uh, capacitor off of here. So as you can see, once again, our purple wires are negative. Our positive wires are orange. So let's pop these out. Now we're going to soak this harness in water. I'm just going to leave these screws out of here for now. It won't hurt at all to soak the wires in, in uh, simple green and water for a little bit. Um, hard to see but if you look closely here maybe you can see it on the camera see all that filth on all these wires and everything our goal is to make these look a lot newer than they are um, obviously uh, they're only gonna get so clean and the connectors are gonna still be yellow because that's what happens with this plastic when it gets old try to compress this down into here and let's go fill it up with some water okay let's throw it in the sink here we'll put some warm water into it take a little bit to fill up here But like I said, don't be afraid to do this. It's not going to hurt anything. The key is, is to make sure that you um, completely dry it out before you plug it back into the game. So don't go doing this in the morning and think you got it dry enough and plug it into the game that night. Let it sit overnight. Hang it up after you take it out of the water to dry. After a couple hours of it hanging up, maybe flip it the other way and hang it up so that it has, it can get out of the connectors. Probably gonna find something to weight this down with to keep it in the water so it doesn't wanna lift up. See what happens here. I think it's gonna keep wanting to rise up as it goes. If I have anything in here, might have to go get something actually. This water bottle is pretty full of water. I have this plate here that I use for uh, touching up paint on uh, cabinets. I use this plate to um, put my paint on and then I rinse it off afterwards. So maybe I stick that in there. Suds everywhere. on top and I can wipe all the suds off that I got everywhere so all right I'm gonna let that soak for a little bit this needed wiped down anyway see it worked out perfectly um so I'm gonna let this soak for a little bit maybe an hour and then we'll come back to it and get it rinsed off and uh, see what it looks like so we'll just let that sit like that okay while that harness is drying we are going to re-glue this um, ring for the shifter back together. Now there is a crack here too. So we're gonna see if we can fix this crack and then also glue this one mount back on that got ripped off at some point in its life. And we're gonna use a product by 3M. This is a panel bonding adhesive. It's used for cars. It um, works on gluing metal to metal. You can use it for plastic, um, pretty much everything. Uh, so this is a special mixing tip. It takes the two different cartridges and mixes them as it comes down the tube. So what we need to do is I need to grab something. I'm gonna grab my uh, little deburring tool. We're gonna kind of make a groove in the backside of this plastic so that we can fill it in with some of this glue to uh, support these cracks right here. 
So let me go grab that. We'll do that first, and then we're going to get this glued back together. Okay, I have my little deburring tool here. I'm going to find this crack right here. So we got a nice groove in there and we're also going to do it on the outside, but we're not going to put this glue on the outside. We're going to use regular body filler on the outside. The reason why I don't use this glue on the outside is it has the chances of shrinking. And when it shrinks, you could possibly see the crack again. Not saying that the crack is still there or it's um, still movable but you could see it if that glue shrinks. So we'll use regular body filler out here, but I still want to uh, groove it out because you could feel the one hot, one side is higher than the other side. So by grooving it down, it leaves me an area to put the body filler. If I just smear body filler over top of this and I don't make an indent right here, then basically we're not gonna do anything because by the time we sand off the body filler, there's gonna be so little amount left that it's not, going to it's going to it's going to crack even if it's glued on the back side so we want to make it a little bit more a little bit thicker i guess you'd say so now we got a nice divot in there that our body filler will fit in, fill into. And we have a divot over here that we could put our glue into. Um, this right here, yeah, I guess that is a little bit of a crack. We need to take a little bit off of this. As dumb as that may sound, because right now, it fits perfectly. Perfectly flush, looks great. Problem is, is this is thick, and there's little tiny glass beads inside of this glue. And what that those little tiny glass beads do inside of this glue is it prevents you from over clamping something. If you're gluing two pieces of metal together on a car, and you clamp the crap out of it, and you really uh, squeeze those clamps tight. It's only going to go so close. It cannot go completely together, the two pieces of metal, and ooze all the glue out. That's why they put that little tiny, tiny little glass beads in the glue is to prevent you from over clamping something and squeezing all the glue out. So what we need to do is the same situation here because since it has those little tiny glass beads, we want to take a little bit off of this so that there's room for them underneath here. If we don't take anything off of this and we just fill this with glue and we stick this on here, it's gonna be sticking up in the air like that. You know what I mean? It's gonna be sticking way up off the air and it's not gonna look right. So we need to just take some off of here as well. Now, most people are not going to have this stuff at their house. Um, there's other glues I'm sure you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's that would probably work. But because I have this, I just use it. I'm not saying you got to go out and buy a, run out and buy a $60 tube of glue and a $100 caulk gun to fix a little plastic repair. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm sure that they make something at Home Depot or Lowe's in the paint section by all the glues that you can use that would probably hold this just just fine so let's take um this is sandable too afterwards so 
So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna fill in this little groove right here. And this stuff is sandable after it's dried. So if I have something that's a little high, I can knock it down with some sandpaper. That's not a problem. So it's mixing itself all the way down the tube. And there it is. We'll leave it tall for now. We'll smooth it out in a minute here. Stick this piece in here. Okay. Take our razor blade here. And let's smooth this out. The less sanding I have to do on this, the better. Saves me time. And you don't really want to get this stuff in your hands. It's hard to come off. It takes days. Okay, this needs a full 24 hours to cure. So we can just put this off to the side, let it sit there overnight. Um, let's double check, yeah. 90 minute work time, clamp time four hours, cure time 24 hours. We're not clamping it, we don't need to clamp it. It fit in there perfectly because I hollowed that out a little bit more, which gave the glue room to uh, sit. So that'll dry overnight so that tomorrow I can get that body worked and spray painted. And then that'll be done. Um, the harness is soaking right now. We can clean this up. Um, this is our coin counter. This, uh, we can take these tabs off here. Let's move this glue over here. Need to clean this bench. Said it yesterday. Just need to get it done. So let's uh, take the cover off of this uh, coin counter because I think I'm going to wire wheel it. Maybe spray a little bit of satin clear over it just to keep it from future uh, rusting. So there's little tabs on this coin counter here and here. So if we bend these tabs, carefully you don't want to break them should be able to slide this outer cover off just like that there's a reel for a coin counter then we have a plastic window in here I'm going to slide that out this we can clean up so now we have this housing right here we can clean all this rust off of here not worry about damaging this piece of plastic. Um, and then on here, we can really carefully take the wire wheel and hit the sides. I'm not gonna get too crazy back here because I don't wanna mess with these wires. I'm clearly not gonna take this apart because the only way to take this apart would be to cut these wires. I'd have to take this bracket out right here. There is a it's like a crush washer in there that has little fingers that hold it. So I don't want to take any of that apart, a little spring or anything like that. So let's just go over to the wire wheel and we're going to carefully wire wheel this too. Just to clean it up, just to make it look a little nicer. The knobs that were on here, I painted, I spray painted them black. So those are cleaned up and ready to go. So let's go over to the wire wheel. I didn't put that back on there yesterday. I was using, uh, I was polishing some stainless yesterday on my other channel for this 59 Impala. So I had a polishing wheel on here, but I did put the wire wheel back on it. So let's just, I'm gonna show you a before I wire wheel and after so you can get an idea.
That's what it looks like after it's wire wheeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera, get this all wire wheeled up, get the other part wire wheeled up, and then we're gonna um, just use some uh, satin clear out of a spray can, some Krylon satin clear, takes like 20 minutes to dry, and then we can put it back together. Okay, got that all cleaned up, it turned out real nice. See here. Just gonna put some clear on it just to protect it. But first, I want to. Uh, I also did this the sides on this, and the mounting bracket and everything. I want to uh, clean this little harness first. I'm not soaking this part. I'm just gonna spray some uh, window cleaner on it. See if it'll clean it up. I wonder if I have a little brush for these connectors. Yeah, it's actually working pretty darn good. Yeah, let's see if I have a brush to kind of clean between that connector there. But all of this stuff just takes a little bit of time, doesn't really cost anything, and it makes a huge improvement when the whole thing gets put back together. Let me go see about a brush. Okay, I got a little paintbrush here. It's a stiffer one. That should work out well for... See all that grime? There's the difference afterwards. And the wires are nice and clean now. They're not all filled with dust and grime. Obviously soaking it does do a better job. It gets between them all, but this isn't, wasn't that bad. So now I'm gonna spray some clear on these metal parts real quick, just to protect them from future corrosion. Um, I should probably cover that up with something. I could just put a paper towel around it. Could always get some tape, but let me see if this will work. Basically just gonna hold this here.
Don't need a lot of it. Okay. Put a little bit on here. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And then we'll be able to put that back together. And then we're gonna put all this wiring back onto the bracket that goes on the um, top of the coin box. So I'm just cleaning the dust and dirt off of this piece of plastic that covers the, uh, how many plays. Okay, let this set up. Maybe I can move it over and we can work on something else. What I want to do is clean up the power supplies a little bit. I think I'm going to um, use this brush and the window cleaner first. Okay, these are this is one of them. Just spray a little window cleaner on here and go over it with my brush. And then I'm going to uh, rinse it off. Just want to get between everything. A lot of times I use simple green to clean these circuit boards, but I haven't had any problems with the window cleaner either. But I don't leave it on there real long, just enough to scrub it with my brush and then I'm gonna rinse it off. Same thing with simple green though. You gotta really rinse your board off well after you simple, simple green it because you don't want to leave any of those chemicals on here. Paintbrush is nice because it gets between these fins. Gets all that crud out of there that's been sitting in there forever. Now the main circuit board is really clean because it was inside of that metal cage and I'm not going to clean that. I am going to do the wiring though for the soldering. So that's pretty much how I'm going to clean these. So I'm going to go rinse this one off and then I'll be right back. Okay, they're both rinsed off. I just kind of have them sitting here. You can see the water puddling up on the floor. In a little while, I'll spin them over. So all the dust and dirt's off of those now. Okay. I cleaned up the screws that hold the switch and stuff on this control panel for the that goes on top of the uh, coin box. I'm gonna unplug this uh, dial here while it's drying for a couple more minutes. It's just about dry. But we can start putting these on. So these have a little tab on them, so they go one way only. And that tab holds it onto the metal. Take the nut off would help. Slides in like this. Five sixteenths.
Okay, here's the knobs that I had cleaned and spray painted black again, matte black. We could stick these on. These have a little Allen key that holds them. I'm gonna have to go grab an Allen key. I forgot about that. We'll go grab that. We'll get these two put on and then we'll put the switch on. This Allen key is a 1 16th. Okay, now the switch can go on, which I did clean the switch. Actually, I'm gonna do the, this button first, which I believe this is a credit button. Let me go clean that on the wire wheel. It's kind of cruddy looking. Okay, then we have our switch right here. Trying to remember, pretty sure I put it through this way. And you know what? I think I took the one off. Okay, white, black. This one's black. Let's see if I can sneak it through like that. Nope. Let's unplug them real quick. Pole position has quite a few parts to it. Not as many as when I did my journey restore, but there's still quite a bit of parts. Okay, now let's put our coin counter back together. Flathead screwdriver here. So this, we have to put the window back in there first, which goes this way. Slide this over top.
Uh, there's a little bend on the end of this thing. There we go. Bend those back over. Okay, that's all back together, nice and clean. Has a clear coat on it, so it's not gonna rust again. Now, this only had three screws on it. No, oh, actually, no, there's four, Never mind. Thought it only had three, but. I think it was on that one. I put it on the outside one. These brackets are universal. They were used for more than one game. So that's why you have an extra hole here and you have an extra spot here for a second coin counter. This has 72,000 577 plays on it which is a lot especially because it's always been a pole position I'm sure a lot of it was free play meaning they just credited up the cabinet without putting money in it so it definitely didn't make that much money in its lifetime but it's been played a lot. I need to order a new Dallas Ram for this. I ordered one to go on the circuit board and they mailed it to the wrong address. So now I gotta order another one. Okay, plug our coin counter back together. Okay, this is ready to go into the cabinet. Um, still need to clean this bracket up. So I'm going to go do that. Let this sit here for a little bit. And then I guess we can get it mounted into the cabinet. Um, don't know how long I, this video is going. I don't want to make it too, too long today. Um, we might just get this mounted in the cabinet, uh, rinse off the wiring harness, um, and probably call it part 11. Part 12, we'll fix the circuit board by running the five volt lines, jumping it around the board and the ground. We'll solder those on, and then um, we can start putting the circuit board back in the cabinet, the power supplies back in the cabinet. Still waiting for the um, uh, cap kit for the monitor, which it says it's going to be here tomorrow, but I highly doubt it. Probably won't be here till Monday. So I'm going to go clean this bracket up on the wire wheel, 
show you what it looks like beforehand. See how it's all nasty and dirty. Show you what it looks like after I get it done. This is all cleaned up. Hardware's cleaned up. So that is ready to be able to go back on to this. I want to clean the dust and dirt off of this. So let's go and you know, let's put this on first. I can find the screws for it. And then we will undo the wiring harness out of the bucket and rinse it off. Okay, I get these screwed in. I'm gonna turn the camera off while I screw that in. It's not like you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll screw it in and show you what it looks like. Okay, there it is. Back in its home. All cleaned, nice, ready to go. A little dusty, but let's go uh, rinse off that harness and see how that looks. Okay, let me see if I can get in here and kind of stay out of the camera. Set this on the floor. in the bucket, all that dirt and stuff. I'm gonna get this rinsed off really well. And then we'll hang it up in the spray booth and we'll take a look at it. So let me get this cleaned up and uh, we'll hang it up and see what it looks like. Okay, it's going to sit in here now and just drip dry. But you can see how much cleaner these wires look. And it's a huge difference. Still a little bit. I'm going to wipe them down real quick with some uh, paper towels, but for the most part, it's pretty darn clean. So let me wipe them down real quick and then uh, I'll be back. Okay, I wiped it down real good. Definitely a lot better. There was a little grime and, gr gr and stuff still stuck to the wires. So I took some paper towels and rubbed it all, rubbed all the wires down real good. And it's pretty darn clean. Is it perfect? No. The only way to get it perfect would be to unzip tie it all, but I don't want to do that. I want to kind of leave all the original zip ties. So we're just going to let this hang and dry. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, that's going to end this video. Nothing real major doing. We're just doing the small things that need to be done in order to finish the game. All this little tedious stuff. You know, from gluing this back together to, you know, cleaning the wiring harness, cleaning the power supplies. Um, what else did we do? We cleaned all the parts and put the uh, controls back together that go on top of the coin box. Um, you know, so just all this little maintenance stuff, cleaning these brackets, getting them all ready so that we can get this wiring harness in the cabinet, get the circuit board back in the cabinet, get the box that the circuit board slides into back into the cabinet um, get all this you know hopefully wrapped up in one two videos more maybe three probably do a cap kit video on that monitor change out the caps if you guys remember the first video you could see how the monitor did work but at the top it was skewed and no matter what I did I could not get that dialed in hoping it's just a cap problem maybe a caps out of spec and it's causing it to do that um, we're going to start with the cap kit. It's the cheapest and easiest way. It's a Cortec monitor. It's a newer monitor. And those are kind of a hit or miss. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I don't know a lot of people that even work on those monitors, uh, those boards. So we'll try the cap kit first and see if that doesn't clear it up. I'm hoping it does. I've had that issue on other monitors in the past and a cap kit did fix that, but you never know. You know, it could be a pot that's out of whack 
you know, one of the pots for adjustments could be out of whack. I, I'm not sure yet. We'll start with cap kit, plug it into the game, see what it looks like. Um, I do need to wash the monitor. Um, I'll probably do that off camera. Maybe I'll just do it now real quick. Um, I'm going to spray it down with some simple green and rinse it with a garden hose. Maybe I'll just do that now real quick so that I can bring it in the shop and let it dry overnight. Because if the cap kit does show up tomorrow, maybe we can put the caps on that board. Um, and then I want to get the wires done on the circuit board, jumping all the five volts in the ground. Somebody had messaged me and said, hey, you don't have the beginning voice at the beginning of the race. And I wasn't sure if it was on the pole position two board because the pole position one, it says prepare to qualify. Well, it's on that one too. And somebody had said, sent me a message saying what chip to look at if it doesn't have that voice. But then somebody else had sent me a message saying that jump all the five volts in the ground first and then retry the game. He said, it's possible that the voice will work because maybe it's not getting enough power to power that one chip that you know has the voice on it so hopefully we'll get lucky we'll jump the wires and it'll solve that problem if not i'll go back in my messages and figure out what chip he said to look at and we'll see if we can't just order another one uh from somewhere you know and uh get it to work so all right that's going to end this video i believe this is part 10 maybe 11 i don't know i gotta look um if you guys like what you're seeing please like subscribe share hit the thumbs up i'd really appreciate it any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, we have a couple more videos and this thing will be finished. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you later.